Good morning, happy Monday. I'm all set for the course. I've been preparing for a trial over the weekend. I did not sleep much, but it was very interesting to be reading and to be uh, understanding some legal points that was I will be raising. So I am very excited. My bag is ready, I'm ready. I will be taking some lunch with me because it may be the case I will not have time to get out of the court to get to, to actually buy some food. So I will take with me some pasta with chicken that I made last night. Yep, so let's get the little let's get the day started. <laughs> For those that they studied in the UK, you probably know Eden Vibescrafts because it's the main company that provides wigs and gowns and everything that you need as a practicing a barrister. Now, this is how it looks like. This is the bag. Does it focus? There you are. And, and this is the box. It is very interesting when you go to Eden Ravenscroft shop because they have a lot of uh, historical items. For example, Lord Denning's bird's cage. Um, you will be able to see it on the video that I've taken at Eden Ravenscroft. It's the big, um, it's the big box, metal box, and it's called the bird case. It was tailor made for Lord Denning itself, and uh, they don't really do it. Uh, I think it was just only made once. So it was very interesting to to learn about the history of the things. So I have here the box. I have to tell you I was very excited to buy my wig. There you are. And then it opens like this. And this is what it has inside. You must find time when you go to fit your wig to make sure that you give some time um, for them to measure your head. And then they will bring different sizes and uh, check which one is best for you. Now this is how it looks like, and it's got the wrap in here, 
and you're supposed to wear the wig you need to haul it from the from the side and you push it on your head so this those parts here they need to fit well on your head and that's how you know it's it looks it, you know it's good it's good for you because you will be wearing it if you you know going to the crown course and of course later stage in your career you will be uh, using it for the supreme course um, and the court of appeal so that's where you're going to be using the wig and you you do need to remove it by taking it from the sides I am a size what's the size I think I was a 22 22 and they do measure your head with that with making a ponytail I don't know why they do that actually uh, but that's what they do. It is very interesting if you want to find out w the reason why uh, in the UK they do wear wigs and I was asking all these questions and the gentleman there said to me that because we have been having so many questions about the history and people were fascinated by it uh, they published a book about the legal habits, a brief sartorial history of wig, rope and gown and it was uh, written by Thomas Woodcock so it is an Eden Ravenscroft book. I didn't have a chance to read it all, but I definitely browsed through it and read the first pages. And what was very interesting to find out is that the wigs was something fashionable by in the six, back in the 16th century. And because the women, they wanted to look very aristocratic, they were wearing this makeup um, from a particular ingredient that would that would cause hair loss, and as a result, they were they were used. They were wearing weeks uh, weeks, and from after some time, that became the the fashion for the aristocrats, and of course, uh, the if I'm not mistaken, Queen Elizabeth the first and King George the third were uh, wearing wigs uh, as part of the fashion, and that stayed throughout the years. And here we are today wearing wigs. Uh, it is very interesting to get, this is a free copy that they give you, so it's really nice. There you are, does it focus? There you are, and let me brush it through. So I like the purple part of it. There you are. So it's quite nice to have it on your, on your law library. It also comes with a, with a card. It says with compliments thanking you for buying the wig with them and he says that they've got over 320 years of experience of uh, legal wearing and tailoring uh, wig making. Something else I want to add is how they make the wigs and uh, I found here there was a picture which I will show you that they will use a um, uh, I would say like a copy of the heads they are Wait, let me just focus it. Wait, there you are. Okay, so that we use a um, how do you call it? The skeleton, uh, the um, a copy of the head, and then they will. If you see there are some holes on the on the on the sample, and that's because they will take they will actually make it. It was handmade, and it it does take a lot of time to make them, and even today it does take time to make them. That is it. There, there's something else I want to add. That you need to buy your. Uh, oh my God! I forgot the English word for this. I remember it's in Greek. We call it berilemio, which means wrapping it around your neck. And this is very comfortable because you don't. You you can wear anything underneath. Even if you wish, you can wear like orange, but you need to have your jacket, and you shouldn't be. Uh, visible to the uh, judges and everyone so you wear it like this and then you cover whatever you wear it underneath so you can still look fashionable after leaving the court but you still uh, you still act professionally by being at the court and representing your clients so yeah I, I strongly recommend for women I don't think they have it for men to to buy the long one I, I believe there is a longer one yeah so that is it and uh, of course you need your gown um, you don't wear a gown at the magistrates court you wear a gown at the court, uh, crown court court of appeal supreme court and you do wear a gown at the um any international courts um if you found this interesting give it a thumbs up and uh, let me know what you would like to see in the next video bye bye